Thank you. Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Hagel, at the uh, start of the committee, you made a statement that said the Justice Department said the President had the constitutional authority to uh, essentially do this deal and ignore the 30-day uh, requirement in the law in, in this case. Is that – did I hear that correctly? You – someone asked the question, I think, on what basis of the President made a decision and what authority he had, and I think I, my response was so – Very similar to yes, that. Yes, yes. Could, could we get a copy of the uh, letter from the Justice Department that um, – that says that the President had that authority? Uh, sir, we've re received a request for that, and we're taking that back. It's not entirely within our control. But thank you, and uh, I look forward to seeing that. And Mr. Preston, you're you're an attorney um, from Yale and Harvard. What, which provision of the Constitution uh, would allow the president to ignore the law? The president has authority under Article Two, uh, yes, sir. and has a duty and responsibility to exercise that authority. Uh, it's not a matter of ignoring the law. It's where uh, the exercise of his constitutional authority is in tension with the statute, uh, where, in this case, his uh, duty and authority to protect service members, to protect U.S. citizens abroad, where the application of this particular provi uh, provision in this particular set of circumstances would interfere with the exercise of authority, then the statute yields to the constitutional authority either as a matter of interpretation or as a, through the application of uh, separation of powers principles. So, so is it Article 2, Section 2, then, that the Justice Department is using to justify saying that he does not have to comply with the law? It's, uh, it's his authority uh, as Commander-in-Chief and Chief Executive. So that's Article 2, Section 2? I believe that's right. That's, under what other circumstances would the Justice Department, uh, potentially Eric Holder, simply tell uh, the president that he did not have to comply with the law. I wouldn't really be in a position to answer that question. I, I think that's the key concern here for most of us on the committee is that uh, if the if the attorney general can simply give the president of the United States, who appointed the attorney general, a letter that says, "Mr. President, you don't have to comply with uh, the law or the Constitution," gives you the authority to ignore the law, then. Uh, <coughs> that is the law of the land under which the president operates, seems to be in clear violation of, of, of what our forefathers gave us in, in the system of, of our democracy where you have a House and a Senate and a president. The House and the Senate both passed uh, pieces of legislation. The president signed that law, signed that making it the law, and now – he can get a letter from an appointee of his that says, Mr. President, you don't have to comply with this, which, which leads me to a bigger concern in what you said at the start, which was that today uh, this country has had and has the authority to hold detainees. Uh, that would potentially change in the future, uh, but it would not necessarily change at, at the end of 14 when we uh, essentially – declare we're no longer in, engaged in hostilities in Afghanistan, but that that would uh, continue as long as we were in a conflict with the Taliban and al-Qaeda. And, and I guess my question is, that, that's your opinion, correct? That's my understanding of uh, how the international law principles apply. Yes, sir, and, and I agree with you. And, but but if, if we follow this same train of thought and action in which they used to determine they did not have to give the 30-day notice, the Attorney General could simply give the President a letter and say, you don't have to do this, and he could release everybody. And, and that's where uh, – that's why we're here. The law required 30 days notice. And uh, the idea that Eric Holder or somebody at the Justice Department can just give the President a letter and say you don't have to comply with the law, that's – that's simply ridiculous. And, well, uh, let me just say, in general, the, the role of the Department of Justice among them is to advise the president on the law. I wouldn't be in a position to talk about the, the content, and I, I can't agree with your characterization, but that is normal process for the executive branch 
for the president to receive advice on the law in the execution of his, sta of his uh, constitutional and statutory responsibilities. Th this law is extremely clear. The law requires 30 days notice. And the idea that Eric Holder can give him a letter saying you don't have to comply with the law and then that becomes the law of the land, it's a clear, clear violation of separation of powers. <clears throat> Mr. Smith. Thank you. Just following up on that, just, just really quickly, under the Bush administration, um, you know, there was warrantless wiretapping authorized, authorized. There was indefinite detention. Post 9-11, there was a whole host of things um, that were clearly against a wide variety of laws. Um, and the president and vice president's justification at that time was that the Constitution gave them those powers given the circumstances. I don't recall any outrage on the right. I recall a great deal of outrage on the left. I recall a number of folks on the left, including one memorable gentleman who wouldn't let me go at the, uh, at the gym about the fact that I was unwilling to impeach the president over this. Um, but this is not even remotely unprecedented. Um, and I was just wondering if you could comment on, the, on that from a legal standpoint. The Constitution is a law. Um, and now I disagree at first glance with the interpretation that you made here. Um, but it's not unprecedented. And walk through a little bit what you know, President Bush did. I mean, he justified an endless array of things that were clearly contrary to U.S. law based on his interpretation of the Constitution and on a much smaller, more narrow scale, isn't that exactly what you guys are doing? I mean, I don't agree with it, but it is far, far from unprecedented. Uh, Congressman, I, it, I wouldn't be in a position to comment on what the previous administration did, but I think your point is a, uh, a good one, that in the exercise of the President's Article II powers, uh, he's called upon to make judgments uh, about uh, the extent of those powers, and uh, and that's precisely uh, what he does. And there will be occasions where uh, the statutory law is in tension with uh, the constitutional provisions, uh, and there are uh, canons of interpretation that uh, call for interpreting the statute so as to avoid a conflict, but where the conflict can't be avoided, uh, then the, the, the Constitution uh, uh, reigns. And uh, that's yeah. not uncommon uh, 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 and has happened uh, in the hi history of the presidency. Well, yeah, Mr. President, if I may, if that interpretation had, handle, had been handled the by the court, time has then I would have disagreed with it, but, but would have been more accepting of it than an individual presidential appointee. Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, 